Last year I did a video called Don't Fuck Crazy. You can find it right here. In that video, I talked about how I dated <laughs> not just one crazy girl, but two crazy girls. And, you know, by some miracle, I, I'd live to tell the tale, right? Anyway, it got me thinking about uh, crazy girls and, and, and how there is a spectrum of crazy. There's, there's crazy on the far end, and then there's damaged, and then there's normal, which is more or less what you want, right? But it's important to talk about not just crazy girls, because crazy girls are, of course, funny, but it's important to identify and, and be able to recognize damaged girls. I can't pinpoint exactly where one ends and the other begins, but by the same token, I can't quite pinpoint where blue ends and green begins. But just because I can't tell where one ends and the other begins doesn't mean that they don't exist, right? That'd be foolish. There are such women as damaged women, damaged goods, and I'm gonna be talking about them in this video. First of all, what are damaged girls or damaged women? Well, it's a little bit hard to pinpoint because it's a little bit different for every woman who's damaged. But these damaged goods are just, you, you don't want to be involved with them long term. You know, short term, or, or maybe even medium term, as, as, as a, uh, you know, in between relationship, sure, no problem, you have a good time with her, right? But long term, long term, that is, you know, when you decide that you want to have a family, don't go with damaged girls. Do not. And I'm going to explain why in this video. See, a damaged girl has psychological or perhaps even psychiatric problems that you can't solve. They, they go beyond the ability of a man to solve them, okay? And these problems that they have, they're gonna bring you down. They're gonna bring you down and they're gonna hurt you long term if you decide to you know, marry up some girl who's damaged. Now, the problem we're experiencing right now is that at this time in history, most girls that you meet are damaged goods. Most of them. And, and that's a tragedy, but that's the state of affairs. Now, why is this the case? Well, for two reasons. Number one, so many girls today have been raised by single mothers. They didn't have their dad around. They didn't have a, a, a male figure around. And this is, you know, the lack of it is very clear in so many of these women. I mean, they, they miss having had a man in their lives when they were growing up. Uh, perhaps they had a stepfather, and the stepfather, well, you know, all kinds of creepiness happens with stepfathers, and especially attractive stepdaughters. It's, it's something that people don't really like to talk about, especially women who marry again. They don't like to talk about it or focus on it because it's just so disturbing, but it's the case, it's the truth. So many second marriages, you have the, uh, the uh, stepfather you know, doing all sorts of creepy shit to the stepdaughter. And these stepdaughters go out into the world and they're damaged, okay? And, and well, that's what's going on right now because of the amount of divorces, of, of, the, of the disposability of marriage. So many young women today are the product of broken homes, the product of single mothers, the product, perhaps, of the abuse by the stepfather, right? So, you know, that's one of the reasons there are so many women out there who are damaged. And I would venture to guess the majority of women are damaged, right? Now, the second reason is actually kind of perverse, but we are living, weirdly enough, in a histor historical epoch whereby the society sort of like glorifies damaged women. Right? It glorifies them. It says that it's a good thing. And, and it's encapsulated in the Me Too movement. What is the Me Too movement? It's basically saying, you know, um, oh, you know, I was abused or victimized somehow. And, and all these other women are saying, ah, Me Too, Me Too, I was victimized too. Ah, I'm part of the gang, right? It is encouraging women to view themselves as victims, victims of some horrible abuse, victims of you know, whatever circumstances, just victims, and, and make, them, make of themselves victimized women who are damaged, okay? And, and, and you know, that's a bad thing, but that's the fashion nowadays, and it is a fashion, by the way. You know, this, this kind of shit, uh, uh, Me Too-ism, you know, it, it's, it's a fashion that'll pass. 
But the problem is that it is pernicious because women tend to be compliant creatures. They tend to want to belong. They tend to want to do and be and act like all the other women of their age group uh, uh, act and behave, right? And so if that means that you know most of them are going to act and behave as if they were damaged and be these narcissistic twats, they're gonna do that, okay? So for these two reasons, you have a majority of women today are damaged, okay? Now, how can you spot damaged women? How, how, what are the tells? Well, there are a whole bunch of them, both, both visible and that you can spot early on in their conversation. For example, a girl with too many piercings. You know, she's got like, uh, you know, one or two earrings, that's fine, but she's got like 10 in one ear and she's got like a, like a nose ring, or one of those stupid, you know, like cow rings. Like, what the fuck is that? I've never understood that. But okay, they've got like a cow ring, right? Um, damaged. Oh, and, and, and a tongue stud or a nipple ring or some shit like that. Damaged, definitely. Tattoos. Girl with tattoos, she's damaged. And, and don't give me the shit that, oh, I was 18 and I was really silly and I did it and now I really regret it. Uh-uh, no. I used to think that, I used to think that, you know, a lot of girls got tattoos, kind of like a spur of the moment kind of thing, and, and then they later regretted it, and many of them do regret it, but even the ones who regret it, they are damaged. They are, I mean, the, the fact that they got a tattoo proves that, okay? No matter how small, no matter how discreet, they're, they're fucked in the head. Yeah, another sign, if she's a smoker. If she's a smoker, she's damaged. Smoking cigarettes or vape, same thing. She's damaged. Crazy hair colors, you know, like uh, blue or neon green or some shit like that. Drug user, definitely damaged. I mean, if she likes her Coke, her, her pot or whatever, damaged. Now those are the visible signs. The signs that you will spot early on in a, a relationship with a woman and you realize that she's damaged, she'll talk about her sexual adventures or sexual escapades. If she laughs about it, Definitely damaged, okay? Any woman who takes sex as a casual thing is by definition damaged. And frankly, any girl who has had more than two sexual partners is likely damaged. And, and by the way, if either one of those two sexual partners was like a casual thing, she's damaged, okay? So it's not merely the fact that she has had just two sexual partners or less. It's, you, you know, the way that those sexual partnerships occurred. If she wants to fuck, fuck you on the first date, damaged, a hundred percent likely. Okay. Even if she says that, oh, I've never done this before. First of all, that's a lie. She's probably done it before. And, and secondly, you know, anybody, any woman who very cavalierly goes to bed with a guy that she's barely met, she's damaged. I don't care what her name is. She is damaged. Another really great sign, and, and this, is, this will come up in conversation, it's something that you should ask early on. Ask her about her father, okay? You know that great scene in, in Blade Runner where they ask the replicant, uh, tell us happy thoughts about your mother. And the guy goes, my mother? I'll tell you about my mother, and pulls out a gun and blazes away the guy, right? That was a great scene. Same thing with the father. If the chick um, says uh, that the father wasn't around, the chick says that uh, she hates her father, anything, anything negative about the father or the father is not around, she's damaged. 100% certainty, okay? All damaged gr uh, girls have issues with their father. And most likely, as I said before, because of all the divorces, most of the time these damaged girls are damaged because of the lack of the father, okay? Uh, it's 100% it's certainty, don't, don't doubt it, okay? Another sure sign is when a woman will talk about her mental health issues and very casually say that she has a anxiety disorder or some shit like that, okay? Any girl who very casually says that she has some sort of mental problem, you know for a fact that she is fucked up, she's damaged, she's somebody that you don't wanna be around. Okay, all of these signs point to the same thing, a woman who is damaged. Now, why is a damaged girl somebody that you want to avoid? Two reasons. Number one, they are unpredictable. And number two, they will oblige you to dedicate your energy towards them 
and not towards the goals that you wish to achieve. That's why damaged women, damaged girls, should be avoided at all costs if you're looking for a woman to marry or form a family with. Well, let me explain. You see, when you're married and you're building a family and you're building your career in order to maintain this family, right? You need to focus. You need all of your energy, all of your drive, all of your IQ points dedicated to the issue of building a career that will generate the revenue, the income that can support your family. Because you, you don't want to have like a one kid type situation. You want to have a family, right? You want to have three, four, five, six kids, right? And you want to be able to send the kids to private school or bespoke school as, as is currently becoming the fashion. It's a very interesting fashion, by the way. You want to be able to send the kids to the Ivy League University. You want to give them a leg up in whatever they plan to do in the future, right? You want that, right? So you need a partner, somebody who's going to be on the same page and is going to be dedicating all of our attention to the kids and helping you achieve your goals, which presumably are for the benefit of the kids and the family that you're building, right? Right. A damaged girl, a woman who is damaged, a woman who is damaged goods, she's not going to be predictable. You know, at crunch time, she might flake out on you. And that is something that you do not want. Uh -uh. Because when you're building a family, when you are trying to build something long term, there are going to be crisis moments. And at those crunch times, you're going to need a woman by your side who is by your side. That you're, you're not going to have to be worried that she might flake out on you. You want her to be steady. You want her to be predictable. You want her to be there when the shit gets heavy. Right? Because it will get heavy, because it inevitably does, right? So, a damaged girl, you're not going to be able to predict if she's going to be there or not. So, number one, that's the first reason, that you don't want a damaged woman long term. Now, the second reason you don't want a damaged woman long term is because if she's damaged, she's going to demand your attention be focused on her and her problems. She's going to demand that you fix her, fix her situation, help her to overcome her problems, whatsoever they may be. Now, the problem is that, see, when you do that, you're looking away from your long-term objectives and you're turning to your partner and trying to fix her, as opposed to going after your long-term goals, long-term goals that she should presumably be sharing, right? But a damaged girl, a damaged woman, she's going to sort of like hog all the spotlight to her. And everything is going to be about her and her problems and her anxiety disorder or her, her bipolar disorder or whatever the fuck, right? Whatever issue that she's got, she's going to oblige you to ignore your long-term goal and focus on her. And because of that, you're not going to be able to achieve your long-term goal. You're not going to be able to provide the living situation for the children that you want to have. You see what I'm saying? Uh, she's going to be a drain on your resources. You see? And is that somebody that you want? Somebody who's not going to help you, but who is going to be a drain on you. You see the problem? That's a serious problem. See, short term. Medium term, ah, fine, a damaged girl as, as, you know, as a casual girlfriend or, or somebody you know in between, ah, no problem. Sure, you know, I mean, yeah, there is no problem at all having somebody like that short term. It's the long term that you don't want the damaged woman, okay? And, and here's the issue. You have to understand from the get-go when you're dealing with a damaged girl, that eventually she will start to suck your attention, suck your energy, and pull you down. Do you want that? Of course not. But that's what they do. Because what happens with a damaged girl is she plays on a key issue of a man, and that is his protectiveness. See, 
all men are instinctively protective. We want to protect that which is ours, our women, our children. We want to protect them, we want to help them. You're married, right? And your wife, you know, all of a sudden has the flu, you know? She has the flu and, uh, you know, you've got a couple of kids, three kids maybe, and she's got the flu and she's got a temperature and the whole shebang, right? So what do you do? Now you call up work and you say, look, I'm going to have to do only half days for the next week or so because my wife is really sick. And you take care of your wife and you do a lot of the things that your wife would be doing. And you support her and you protect her and you bring her chicken soup, right? And, and you change the sheets while she takes a shower and, and, you know, feeling miserable and all, you know, sweaty from the fever and stuff like that. And, and you try to comfort her. And that's perfectly natural and normal and good. And it's something that you should do. Because she's your woman. She's the mother of your children, right? You should do that. You should take off work for a week or so. And that's perfectly fine for a week or so. But what happens if it becomes months or years because she's got like some anxiety shit or some other psychiatric problem or psychological problem or whatever the fuck it is, right? She's going to be weighing you down. And she's going to be playing on your pity. There's a famous novel by Stefan Zweig called uh, Beware of Pity, The Impatience of the Heart. And it goes by those two titles. It's a great novel, by the way. And it basically is about how a woman plays on the pity and the protectiveness of a man to a tragic conclusion. It's a fine book, uh, you know, early 20th century. But the point is, see, this issue is very well known. Men are easily manipulated by damaged girls, by damaged women. See? And especially the nice guys, the guys who are, are extra protective, you know? Not assholes like me. Me, me I'm, I'm just a complete asshole in that regard, you know? I mean, I'll help out for a little while, but after a while, if it gets to be too much, and just cut that off and just leave it behind because I'm an asshole. I, I've, never, I've never denied that I'm an asshole, right? But the nice guys, the, the, the men who are morally and emotionally better than I am, those guys get fucked over by damaged women. They, they do. They do. Okay, I see it all the time. Yeah? Because they want to save the damaged girl. That's the problem. They want to save the damaged girl, and in trying to save her, at best, she just weighs him down all of his life. She's like a like a like a like an albatross around his neck, pulling him down ever so slightly. At best. At worst, he drowns because of her. He sinks to the very bottom of the ocean because of her. And happens all the time, you know? Uh, great works of literature have been written about this shit, okay? It's, it, it is common. It is stereotypically common. That's why damaged girls are so lethal to decent, good men. Assholes like me, <laughs> we're immune because we're too selfish. I guess, I've, like I said, I have never denied who I am. I am a selfish asshole. And if a woman demands too much of me, I just drop her. And that's why I've never been, uh, you know, held down by a damaged woman. Because I just decide, you know, she's not worth it for me and just leave her behind. But the nice guy, the good and decent guy, oh, yeah, he gets fucked, okay? You who are watching, you who are presumably decent, that's why I'm telling you this, see? Because assholes, the assholes like me who are watching this shit, they're like, I don't have to worry. And they don't. They don't. They don't have to worry because they are such assholes. They are so selfish that no damaged woman will be able to get her claws into him. But the nice guys like you, oh, learn to recognize them. There are outward signs and there are inward signs. Like I said, you know, piercings, tattoos, shit like that. Anytime that they have like some sort of psychological problem or some kind of physical problem. Another example, you know, lots of times they have some sort of physical problem uh, uh, of some chronic disease or some shit like that. Mm -mm. They're, it's, they're damaged. They're fucking damaged. I'm telling you. Okay. I know these things. Remember, I know this shit not because I'm smarter. It's because I've been around longer. I've seen more. Okay. If you're a good and decent guy, 
What you have to do is what I said in a previous video. And in, in the video where I said, uh, what makes a man? You can find it right here. You see, you might fall in love with a damaged woman. And, and this happens all the time. You will fall in love with her and you will recognize that she is damaged and that she's no good for you and that she is pulling you down, right? Well, here, here is the moment where you have to apply some of the ruthlessness of men who are bigger bastards and bigger assholes than you. And you have to set aside your love for this woman and dump her. Dump her as soon as you realize who she is. Because she is going to bring you down. And you will never achieve any of the things that you want in life. Because she will make sure of it. She will make sure that she is the focus, the center of your attention. She will dominate your attention. Suck away all of your focus onto her. And as the years pass, you will watch as that peak, that summit, that, that thing that you were striving for, it gets further and further away from you as the years pass. Because the woman that you are with, the damaged woman that you are with, this damaged woman is driving you away from the things that you want. You don't want that. So cut her out as soon as you realize who she is. Dump her. Be hard about it. It's difficult. Especially if you're a decent and good man. It is very difficult, but you have to do it. Trust me on this one. Trust me, okay? Because you will live to regret not having dumped such a woman. <laughs>